today we will be delving into a recent paper that studies how the behaviors of two powerful language models, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, have changed over just a few months. These models are the backbone of ChatGPT, and we'll be looking at how they perform on various tasks, from math problem solving to answering sensitive questions and even code generation and visual reasoning. So without further ado, let's get started. The first task examined in the paper is maths problem solving. Surprisingly, the language models exhibited significant drift in performance between March and June 2023. As you can see from figure two, GPT-4's accuracy dropped from an impressive 97.6% in March to a mere 2.4% in June. On the other hand, GPT-3.5 showed remarkable improvement with its accuracy soaring from 7.4% to a staggering 86.8% in June. But that's not all. GPT-4 became more concise in its responses with the average verbosity decreasing from 821.2 in March to a 33.8 in June. Meanwhile, GPT-3.5's responses became longer, growing by about 40% over the same period. Moving on to answering sensitive questions, the researchers noticed two major trends in the behavior of GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. As shown in figure three, GPT-4 answered fewer sensitive questions from March to June dropping from 21% to 5%. On the other hand, GPT 3.5 answered more questions, increasing from 2% to 8%. This suggests that safety measures have been enhanced in GPT 4's June update, while GPT 3.5 became less conservative. Additionally, both models seem to provide less rationale for refusing to answer certain inappropriate questions in June, opting for shorter explanations like, sorry, but I can't assist with that. It appears that these language models are becoming safer, but perhaps at the cost of providing detailed justifications. So now the researchers employed the AIM attack, which depicted a hypothetical story and challenged the language models to act as unfiltered and amoral chatbots. Check out table one on page five. In March, GPT-4 provided direct answers 78% of the time, but that number plummeted to just 31% in June. On the other hand, GPT-3.5 remained consistent with only a 4% difference in answer rate between the two versions. Next up, let's delve into code generation, a new dataset with 50 problems from lead codes, easy category was created for this section. As seen in figure four, the number of direct executable code generations dropped from March to June for both GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. In March, over 50% of GPT-4's generations were directly executable, but this dropped to 10% in June. Similar trends were observed with GPT-3.5. Interestingly, the decline in executable generations might be due to June versions adding extra non-code text, rendering the code not executable. These language models are indeed sensitive to even the smallest changes. Finally, we explore visual reasoning, a task that requires abstract reasoning. The language model's performance on this task was relatively low. Figure 5 shows that both GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 saw marginal performance improvements. However, for more than 90% of visual puzzle queries, the March and June versions produced the exact same generation. While the performance improved slightly, overall both models still have a long way to go in excelling at visual reasoning tasks. At the core of human intelligence lies the ability to form and abstract concepts, enabling us to comprehend new information through analogy and make decisions in novel situations. In AI research, the study of concept formation and abstraction often involves idealized domains, capturing essential aspects without real-world complexities. Francois Chalet created a thousand task corpus called ARC, or ARC Challenge, emphasizing objectiveness, numerosity, basic geometry, 
and topology as prize for problem solving. ARC is very similar to classic IQ tests, in particular Raven's progressive matrices. Raven's? Uh, yeah, Raven's progressive matrices. I mean, if, if you've done IQ tests in the past, you know where that is probably, or at least you've seen it, even if you don't know what it's called. Out of these, 800 tasks were made public and served as a challenge on Kaggle. The remaining 200 tasks formed a hidden test set to evaluate AI systems. To further evaluate AI systems and their understanding of core concepts, the researchers proposed Concept Arc, a systemic evaluation method. Concept Arc chose 16 central concepts found in Cholet's Arc training and evaluation tasks. Each concept group comprises 10 new Arc tasks, instantiating the given concept in various ways. As an example, check out these tasks from Concept Arc related to the concept of sameness in figure two. Now let's compare how human participants performed in Concept Arc against AI systems, including GPT-4 and the top Kegel programs. Human participants displayed impressive accuracy with over 90% average accuracy on 11 concepts and over 80% on the remaining five concepts. In contrast, the top Kegel program struggled to surpass 80% accuracy on any concept. Even GBT4, though not explicitly designed for these tasks, fell below 30% accuracy on 15 out of 16 concepts. To gain deeper insights, the researchers analyzed the errors made by both human participants and AI systems. Human errors often involved carelessness or near misses, indicating a grasp of the underlying concept, but an error in application. In contrast, errors made by the winning ARC Kegel programs in GPT-4 were less interpretable. And the researchers designed Concept Arc with a clear mission in mind. First, they aim to foster the development of AI systems that understand generalizable core concepts. Second, Concept Arc provides a fair evaluation platform for systems claiming such abilities. Finally, the benchmark strikes a balance not being overly challenging and allowing for genuine progress in developing such systems. This benchmark opens new doors for AI research, emphasizing the significance of grasping core concepts. The journey towards understanding and abstraction continues, and we can't wait to see the breakthroughs that lie ahead.